A two-day memorial marking the death of Cuban dictator Fidel Castro is getting underway in Havana's Revolution Square. While in the streets of Miami's Little Havana, Cuban exiles have been celebrating the death of the man that they call a brutal tyrant. Texas Senator Ted Cruz describes the moment that his father found out that Castro was gone. You know, for so many of us whose families have been imprisoned, have been, have been tortured, have, have seen the destruction of Cuba uh, that, that Fidel Castro carried out, my, my dad as a teenager was imprisoned and tortured by Batista. He was, he was beaten in a prison cell, had his teeth kicked out of his mouth. For a man who has tortured and murdered and oppressed for so many, it, it, it is thankful that, 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 that he is no longer with us. Steve Harrigan, live in Havana, Cuba. Good morning, Steve. Martha, we've been hearing some cannons going off over my shoulder. The official morning period getting underway with a 21-gun salute here and in the city of Santiago as well. Today we expect tens of thousands of Cubans to march by a nine-story portrait of a young Fidel Castro in Revolution Square. As is often the case in Cuba, it will be difficult to determine whether they are there out of genuine emotion for the man who ruled this country with an iron fist for the past 50 years or whether they are instructed to do so by the government. After that, on Wednesday, Castro's ashes will be moved across the country, transported to the city of Santiago in a three-day procession. That's where he began the Cuban Revolution in 1953, and that's where he will be interred on Sunday morning. As for what he leaves behind, his 85-year-old brother, Raul Castro, in power officially for the past eight years. Some think perhaps Raul could quicken the pace of really temporary economic changes they've made here so far, but he has been a lifelong communist who said he will step down two years from now, so we could see a real generational change here in the leadership in Cuba. One big outstanding question, where do relations between the U.S. and Cuba go from here? Under Obama, we've seen a warming that could change under President Trump. Back to you. All right. Thank you very much, Steve. Steve Harrigan reporting from Havana. Uh, and Donald Trump tweeting just a moment ago uh, about this, saying that if Cuba is unwilling to make a better deal for the Cuban people, the Cuban-American people, and the U.S. as a whole, I will terminate the deal, of course, referring to the uh, deal that was made by President Obama and the leadership of Cuba to open things up a bit. A lot of reaction coming up on yeah. that in a moment here. President-elect Donald Trump had some tough talk for the Castro regime in Cuba during the campaign. Will he keep that promise? Uh, and should he? We'll talk with Jeff Flake, the Republican of Arizona, uh, who makes a different argument. We'll talk to him about that live. Also this, Steve.